There is a super cool web design trend that's being used by some of the largest names in the industry. And that design trend is called the bento box. Bento boxes are super fun because they allow you to lay out your website in a really modern, modular way, inspired by the traditional food box called the bento box. So in today's video, I wanna teach you how to design and build these bento boxes into your websites without touching a single line of code. I think a great place to go and find inspiration for your bento grids is bentogrids.com. There is just tons and tons of examples, dark mode, light mode, illustrated, animated, flat design, and you can just open those up and go visit the source. But these bento grids are being used everywhere. DJI is really heavy on using these right now. Apple is a huge user and innovator of the bento grid layout. And I especially love it when we have bento grids that have a little bit of interactivity inside of them. You can see you hover over these and you get that really cool, fun interactivity. Now, interactivity is not a requirement of bento grids, but the standard kind of way to think about bento grids is however many grid cells you want in whatever sizes you want, but we need to have consistent margin and padding or what we call gap space in between those bentos. You can see we have our own design built here in Figma of our own bento grid, and it's actually a little bit more of a complex one. We got two cards up here. We have you know, two of the same size cards here. We've broken that size down into the little half size mini cards. And then again, we're repeating that same style underneath. So with that being said, we're going to move over into our no code tool. We're going to be using Wix Studio today to rebuild this bento grid layout without writing a single line of code. All right, we have a blank Wix Studio project open and we are just going to grab the default section that's sitting on our screen and we might as well just add this cards layout. That's going to kickstart our process. And what I like to do is I like to actually come up to the size of my element. I like to turn on advanced sizing. That way I can move away from these auto sizes or pixel sizes and I can move to viewport height. And I want to make this thing 100% of the height of the viewport. That's our vertical real estate that our browser can see. Now you can see it's stretched out our boxes to make them a little bit bigger. And now we just really need to address how this layout is going to work. What is the grid structure using the CSS grid technology that we're gonna need to build to support our complex bento grid structure? So you might look at this and see, okay, I have I have two cards up top, I have a card here, a card there, but we need to look at it as a consistent grid structure. So it's gonna be difficult to add two here and then three down below. What I kind of think might work is if we can visually or mentally break this into a six column grid. So you can imagine that this card takes up three of those columns, so one column, two column, three column, then another one, two, and three. That way when we get here, we know this one's taking up two, this one's taking up two, taking up two, and then we have the same repeat of our top cards. So those are our columns, and now we have to think about rows. I see one row, I see two row, I see three rows, and I see four rows. Now the beauty of CSS Grid is that you can actually move containers to take up custom areas or portions of that grid. And so when we move back over to CSS Grid or over Wix Studio, we now start need needing to dictate our size and we can actually just grab in our layers panel, let's grab the section here and let's scroll down. And I also wanna turn on advanced CSS grid. It's gonna give us a lot more fine grain control. I move up and you can see that I have a current two by two structure. I wanna add on to that. So let's open that up. And remember we said we're gonna have six columns. I'm just gonna start adding some columns here and until we have six. Now notice we're using what we call a fractional unit. So every one of these columns is just one fraction and however many columns, it's gonna divide them responsively and evenly, which is very, very helpful for us. We also had four rows, so why don't we open that one up? You can see this one is using min and max width. We don't want that, We and we don't want viewport height. We actually want that fractional unit, and we want fractional unit, and let's add two more. We're probably gonna to have to customize those as well and make those our fractional unit. So let's make sure we're doing one whole fractional unit for each of those and just like that when we zoom out you can see I now have this massive grid structure that is six columns and has four rows now these cells of our column are butted up right next to each other and we don't want that so we're going to grab that section and actually move down to our gap and we're going to add I think I had my design something like 20 pixels 
of spacing in between. And again, all that responsive work is done for us. It is measuring gutters and the gaps and the sizes using that fractional unit and creating this really responsive structure. Now, the last thing we need is we don't want our design or our grid to butt right up against the edge of anything. So why don't we just come down really quickly and add a little bit of padding. We'll do something like 40 and we will do a hard coded value here, 40 pixels. And I will add that 40 pixels all around. Now we have a little bit of space. And while we're here, we can just take the color all the way out. And so now we have that dark background of our design. Now, looking at it, we have a bunch of containers and that's exactly what we wanna add into our six by four grid. We have a couple of containers that are actually invisible that are already hidden there. So let's delete these and we can just start from scratch here. And you can see we still have that section with that CSS grid established. Why don't we go up and actually grab a container. I'll grab this colorful container and I'll drag it onto the screen. Now this is where we get to be playful and just resize things exactly like our design has us doing it. So for instance, I have my two top cards. Those are those three columns. And I'm gonna grab that and I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna pop it over here. And we'll just duplicate this a couple more times because I know that those bottom cards are the exact same thing, right? So we have three columns, three columns. All we have to do for these is once they're in the cells that we want them to be, expand them to fill and each one of them will immediately become stylable and all that good stuff. So now each of these are responsive and that's super easy for us. So I can copy and paste again and let's just unhook that and figure out where we put that new card of ours. Copy and paste so we get that grid there at it, it hidden side. So let's just fill that again. And with our next one, this is going to be two of those columns, but it's taking up the majority of the rows. So we'll just bring that down just like that. And we have a couple of cards that take up uh, these middle uh, columns and rows. So we'll just pop those in as well. And one more copy and paste will allow us to place this guy over here. When we do that, we just simply expand these to fill and that gap that we've established is doing all the work for us. Look, now we can turn on and preview our design. We have fully responsive. This thing is epic. And all we have to do now is customize, right? So I can come in and start adding some media inside here. And we can start with that very first one, which is that white background design. Let's add that. And we're gonna move this into fast forward and we will meet you on the other side as I put in all of the customization, the text and the background images. All right, that's it. We have built our responsive layout. You can see it here when we preview our design, actually change the height of this to be more of that fixed size in a pixel value so that we can stretch it out. Definitely inside of our design, you have to stretch down quite a bit to see all of these bento cards. We just try to replicate that a little bit inside of our design. The whole thing is responsive. The text inside is responsive and we have this really cool bento grid. And that's how easy it is to build and implement these bento grid layouts. Well, that's everything you need to know about designing and building bento grids inside of a no-code tool. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the descriptions. What do you think? Are you gonna use these bento grids in your next project? I'd love to hear from you. And check the description for some helpful links to bentogrids.com and a bunch of other helpful resources on the topic. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about web design, so ring the bell so you know when another one comes out. And if you're looking for more content right now, check out this video or that video, and I'll see you in the next one.